Good morning. Happy Sunday. I love Sundays. It's 9 a.m. and I have had my coffee, my breakfast. It was just lovely. I have big plans today to get down into my garage and start to disassemble the van build in my van. That's what I'm doing today and I'm hoping to take you along to see some of that process. But first things first, food prep. I need to get some foods prepared for the next few days and that comes before anything. So I got busy this morning. So my new pressure cooker has been delivered. If you missed my video about what happened to my other one, I accidentally damaged it and it's gone in the trash. So I ordered an instant pot and uh, I got it and I've been using it and it's truly not any different than the Proctor Silex one that I had. It's a pressure cooker. Um, it does have all these features uh, that I likely won't use. There's all kinds of buttons on this pressure cooker, but I basically use pressure cook and I have used saute. So you can use it like a saute pan. And that was handy in the van. Um, and the Proctor Silex one had, that, had those features too. And I'm happy with both of them. I don't even recommend one over the other. So far, it's serving me well, just like the other one did. So this morning, I made kale with green onions. I made sweet potatoes. I made broccoli. And I made some paprika chicken. I have it all in containers. They're cooling and everything's ready to go in the fridge. It will serve me well for the next few days. Very nutritious and delicious foods prepared precisely the way that I enjoy them. It's a process to figure that out, like for timing for things. You know, you might like things more well done than me. I might like things a little al dente. I, you know, uh, I might want this much smoked paprika on it. You might want that much. Um, it's really all preference and I don't really have recipes. I just cook to my own preference. Just play with the cooking times of the different items and uh, you know go online and search especially if you have an instapot you can get instapot information uh, uh, countless videos on it um, i started to watch a few of them but eh, i just found the times that work for me so if you cook something for two minutes and you open it up and it's a little overdone so you eat it and then the next time you make it for a minute in the pressure cooker you know it's just uh it's just trial and error I'm going to head into the my little kitchenette right now. Everything has cooled off and it's ready to go in the fridge and I'm gonna get myself down in the garage. So here I am in my garage, and here's my cute little camper van, and it still has everything in it. I need to take out the bed. I need to take out the solar panels. I need to take out the buckets. I need to take out my Blue Eddy and that little table. I need to take out the cubbies. I have the cooler airing out a bit to freshen it up, and I'll clean it all out. 
in my little Berkey stand. I don't know that I'll be using that in my new build, but this build really served me well for the two months I was on the road. It really did, but I get bigger and better ideas. I gotta take out my little nightstand too, and my flowers, and my CO2 detector. Yeah. And here's a look over here at my workshop. I have this nice big table here. I need to brush this off and clean it up. I have some kill mat. Before I left, I ordered it. I thought I was going to use it before, um, before my road trip, but I didn't. But this is like a sound deadening stuff, and that's going to be part of my new van build, is to put some sound deadening in. And uh, yeah, so basically, here's all my my power tools, and um, I got all kinds of stuff. I have old bureaus from um, just old bureaus that I have um, organized. I All different things in, inside each drawer, I have them labeled because it's just what I do. And um, over here is another tool chest and it has all kinds of things I need and every drawer has just all just stuff, you know? And I just have everything organized so I, I everything I know where everything is, and um, I love my little workshop. <laughs> I love my little workshop. Down here in this little cupboard, whoops, down here in this little cupboard is all my saws, all different saws, circular saw, jigsaw, hand saws, chop saws, all kinds of saws there. And then this is a tool chest right here. It has everything, knee pads, safety glasses, nails, screws, screws, all kinds of stuff in there. And then I just um, open up and get what I need. So it's very nice. And over here is just kind of a heap of stuff, just a lot of like little scraps of wood. And this is the leftover insulation stuff. I'm gonna use this to further insulate um, to better insulate my cooler for my next build. But there's all my scraps of wood. Um, over here is all scraps of wood, and I just use all of this first. Before I buy any new wood, I always look there. And this is basically all my, this is just all kinds of stuff. That's all like oh, automotive stuff and tile stuff and paint. Here's my paint, my paint section over here. <laughs> Lots of paint. Paint brushes, paint rollers, paint cloth, painting drop cloths. I got my little two wheeler over here. So I have a nice little workshop, and I love my workshop. And I just made it with a bunch of junk, just old dressers, things I got at thrift stores. Um, this little shelf right here was from a thrift store, and um, yeah. This is my workspace. This is my workspace. I even have some wood up here, some planks up there, and I just always seem to have a supply of whatever I need for my projects. And if I don't have it, then I go to Lowe's and buy it. But I always try to use my scraps. So this is where I'll be spending a lot of my time the next couple of months. I'm looking forward to the weather getting warmer so I can open up the two garage doors. So this is where I'll be spending a lot of time over the next couple of months working on this new van build. I'm very excited and um, today begins the day of disassembling everything in this van build, taking it all out, and then um, the, the first thing on the agenda will be the kill mat for the noise control. Although when the van is empty, when you're driving down the street, it's very, 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 very noisy, which is why I bought the kill mat. I didn't have time to install it before this past road trip. That's why it's still here in the box. 
Um, but I found that once I filled it up with all, when I built it out to my temporary build for this road trip, I found that once it has stuff in it, it's really not that loud. So, uh, but I have it and I'm, so I'm going to put it, I'm going to, I'm going to put, use it. So I'm going to put some kill mat up and then work on the insulation once I decide if and how I'm going to insulate. There's all lots of options and um, haven't quite decided if I'm going to insulate at all. Um, and if I do, um, I have certain things that are very important to me that I'm going to consider as I make my decision. Yay! Yay! So somebody asked me if I was able to get into the front seat without getting outside of the van. Now, there's a very little tight, tight space between these two chairs. And there is an arm here. And I thought, I don't know if I can, but I can just get out of the store and come right in here. So I thought that would work fine. But then I realized that I can. Um, after several attempts at trying to get in there and having it really kind of tough to get my, to bend myself to get under the steering wheel, I realized that I need to, I need to go in backwards. And somebody on my channel asked me how I can do this. And um, I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I just have to go in backwards. So I go like this, I back up and I go like this. And then I turn around like this, and then I go like this. <laughs> so I just get up on my feet, and then I back out like this, just like this. And there you have it. So this is something I installed on the side of this cabinet, and this was to, um, hold my Berkey in. So basically I put these two bungees, I put these two bungees right around the Berkey and it worked just fine. So I'm going to, I had the same system installed in my uh, minivan and I just took it out and put it here. I'm going to take these off here and use them in my new build in a different location. <laughs> so I, I found the right size. I don't know what these are called but I found the right size that fit over these nuts. I got the first one off. Number two off. <laughs> Number three off. The three. Yeah, I got the fourth one off. So the reason that these were kind of difficult to get off is because I had forgotten that we didn't just use screws, we used bolts nuts and bolts. So like a bolt came in this way, out this way, because of this just being just kind of cheapy pressed wood. Um, the screw probably would have just pulled out from the force of those little bungees. So I forgot about that. So yeah, so it took a little bit of time, but hey, you know, I got time. <laughs> I got time. So now I have to deal with everything that's bolted to the floor. And um, that includes the bed and what the hell? That includes the bed. It includes this uh, Berkey thing. It includes this. Everything is L bracketed to the floor. So I need to back all those screws out. go. So let's start right here. We'll go right here. There's one. And two. Three. There we go. Berkey stand gone. So I'm thinking I won't be using that Berkey stand in my new build, but I might, who knows?
Now it's time to get this cooler out. So I got these bungees on that are really, really tight. And I'm gonna try to back them out of these. Oh, I did it. Now I'm going to take this Bluetti out. Now I'm going to take the Bluetti out. So I'll start with taking out my two solar panels. Here's the bungees from the uh, the bungees from the cooler. These worked really great. They, they're the really hard rubber ones, except you need a lot of muscle to make it really tight and be able to pull it because it's not real stretchy. So you need kind of somebody with muscles. It wasn't me. It wasn't me that did it. I'm gonna take these little eye hooks out because these are great. You know use them likely somewhere else. So I'm going to put my, pull my seat up so I can get this table out, this little table that I custom made just for this spot. I measured and I just made a table to completely cover it. I'm not a furniture maker whatsoever. So if you can see what I did to put four legs on a table, I just used four L brackets on each leg. <laughs> Not a furniture builder, but guess what? I build furniture. <laughs> Forget it. So this, I don't, I think I'll be using this table in my new build. So now this has also the same kind of bungees. <sighs> oh my gosh. I gotta take those bungees out somehow. You know, you don't want a 60 pound Bluetti to go airborne when you're driving. So what what we did was, we, these are so hard to stretch because they're so tight. Ah, I got the bungee off. All right, so this bungee was extremely crucial to have. And then there's another one on this handle too. There's another one in here and it was holding it down on this end because it was just important that it stayed still. All right, I gotta hook that, I gotta unhook that somehow. <laughs> oh, God bless me, God bless me. This is all the stuff that my friend Bob helped me with when I was building it. It's a couple of things that I weren't, wasn't quite strong enough for. Oh, I think I did it. No, I didn't. But I'm gonna do it myself. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. You know, sometimes you can just do it. You just has to, you just have to keep trying. <laughs> Here's the other bungee. The bungees, the Blue Eddy bungees are off. Now I wouldn't lift this Blue Eddy and walk very far with it. It is 60 pounds, but I am able to pick it up off the, off the floor and put it down here. I am able to do that, but when I store it in my house, uh, if it's freezing, freezing out here, I don't want it in here if I'm not traveling. So I have my son bring it in, but I'm able to pick it up and just go like this. There we go. So 
So these are the brackets that I put on so that I could bungee the Bluetti to the floor so it would not go airborne. Okay. And I use these big washers and these screw and these big huge brackets. Those are coming off, baby. Those are coming off. But I'm going to save all this hardware. Because this will be this will be secured back to the back to the floor another time in another way. And this this system worked really great. Now I'm going to take now I'm going to loosen up the uh, I'm going to detach the uh, this cubby cubby from the floor on this side. I already did the other side. And then this will come right out. being smart using duct tape to put these up white duct tape I didn't want to see the tape so I used the white and I was hoping it was going to come off without leaving a mess and it is now let me just tell you something about these lights in theory they're pretty cool when you put them on they're kind of fun to look at but can I just say that they provide for a lot of bulbs, they provide very little light. So it was, wasn't was very useful as far as light goes for me. And as far as creating ambiance in the van, well, I suppose, but I just found myself to never really be in a position to bother with it because just not in the van. I mean, when you're really, when you're traveling and you're at night when it's dark that you would put these on, I'm usually in bed. I'm not looking for ambiance. I'm looking for dark and quiet and not creating any moods for myself, you know? So I found that I will likely not put these back up. They're not worth it to me. Ugh. But I'm, gl I'm grateful that this tape is not leaving this mess of a residue. And you know, I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with these. These were in my little greenhouse out in the yard in the summer. And even out there. I never hardly put them on. I don't know. Maybe I just have the wrong ones. They don't really they have they have the remote and they light up in eight different ways and uh I don't know. I've seen like some of those lights like this that are more like like LED strips. Is anybody familiar with those? Do those work good? Do those give like are they actually useful as light? I, I must say that these three lights uh, really they don't even give me the light that I really want sometimes. Most of the time, yes, but not all of the time. But that bug light that I have, that uh, 
little bug zapper with the light at the bottom that I had, that orange thing. I, could, I forget the name of it, but I'll put it right here. Uh, that gives very good light. And that was very useful for me. I had it right over my counter. So whenever I was doing anything on my counter, I was It felt, it felt very well lit. But if I put these on, it wouldn't make a difference. If I put these on, it would hardly make a difference. That's my opinion on lights. And I think I want a different lighting solution. Uh, in my van travels, I've always thought like, oh, you know, needing light is kind of, overrated it's like you don't need that much and you can just as long as you can see what you're doing but after this last trip i'm actually thinking i i want a really good lighting solution just for when i'm busy doing things that are you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying oh and all my pretty flowers those are gonna come out I just stuck them in this hole. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. Those made me happy every day. I loved, I loved seeing those colors every day. really good <laughs> oh shoot on all of this stuff I used a really good um, sticky back mounting tape double-sided on this on the carbon monoxide and on this and holy smokes I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get that off I think I know This little mini, mini crowbar. <laughs> I'm gonna try that. Oh, that was it. Little mini crowbar. Here's my lights. Little mini crowbar. Let's see if it works on this. I can feel it breaking away. Oh, I could do it this way, silly mama. Come on now, you got this. You got it. Yes. Oh, it's gooey and stick. <sighs> Little mini crowbar. Well, this is good. This is good. Is my pull-out table that I've been using on my trip, and my and it's also my tap dance floor for the road. <laughs> oh, what a nut job! Oh boy. And now I got my my drawers from under the bed. Those just held all my food, and I just slid them in and out. They worked great. They worked great. There was a third one too, way down there, that I took off. So now this is attached to the floor. Oh, 
there you have it. Detached. Now I'm going to go down the other end. And now that I have it turned off, now I can take these out. I'm saving all this hardware because it could serve me well in the next build. And I like to reuse things. I very much like to reuse things whenever possible. Are these little strips of wood that I put on the floor in between the buckets it gave them like a channel to stay in line so they wouldn't start shifting all down here or down here while I drove they wouldn't be bumping into each other so they could just slide out in and out so that was that worked really well I'm so happy to have phase one of my new van build complete. And that is the disassembly of the temporary van build and I found a flower. <laughs> the next phase I'm gonna clean and then I'm going to research. I'm gonna research the application of kill mat and I'm gonna research different insulation options and I'll keep you, keep you in the loop on what I choose and why. Um, I'm gonna very carefully choose wisely. Uh, I, it was advised to me that, you know, I don't even have to insulate now, I can wait until it's a problem, but I'm not too sure I wanna build and then consider insulation after it's all built. I think I want to just make the decision now. Um, do I want to insulate, even if it means just having the van 10 degrees warmer in the winter, 10 degrees cooler in the summer? Um, you know, it's not a major difference, but it might be enough to take the edge off of some discomfort. Um, so, I'm going to do my research and I'm going to decide and I'm going to do it my way, <laughs> like everything else. So I'm going to wrap it up. It's time for lunch. It's time for lunch. One of my favorite times of the day. <laughs> so I'm going to go have my delicious lunch and then um, move into my afternoon and whatever that brings. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.